You know, there's a kind of ghost living on the internet. It's not a scary one. Actually, it's familiar. It's the ghost of an old friend, an operating system that not too long ago was running on hundreds of millions of computers all over the world. Just for a second. Can you hear it? That little startup sound. It just takes you right back, doesn't it? To a whole different time, a different desktop, a time that was all about the clean, glassy look of Windows 7. For years, Windows 7 was an absolute titan. I mean, people loved it. It was stable, easy to use, and it had that super cool aero glass design. But you know how it is. Tech doesn't stand still. So back in 2020, Microsoft officially pulled the plug on support. And just like that, this classic became a piece of digital history. But here's where it gets interesting. For a really passionate community of fans and developers, that wasn't the end of the story. They were nostalgic, sure, but they also felt like some of the best ideas got left behind. And that led them to ask a really fascinating question. What if you could bring it back? Not just as it was, you know, frozen in time, but as something better. Something that keeps the soul of the original but gives it a modern heartbeat. Well, that is exactly what a community of developers is trying to do with a project they're calling Reunion 7. So what in the world is Reunion 7? It's not just a theme pack or a fan page. It's a full-blown community-modified OS, and it takes us into a really interesting corner of the tech world. At its core, a modified OS is pretty much what it sounds like. A group of people who are not the original company, in this case, not Microsoft, take the original system and just start tinkering. They get in there, they alter the code, add new features, strip out things they don't like, and sometimes completely change how it looks and feels. Okay, the best way to think about this is like a resto mod car. You know, when someone takes a beautiful, classic 1960s Mustang, keeps that amazing body, but under the hood, they drop in a brand new, high-performance engine, modern brakes, a new suspension, the whole deal. You get all the classic style, but with today's performance. That's the dream for Reunion 7. So what did these digital mechanics actually change? Let's pop the hood and really look at the key differences between the original Windows 7 and Reunion 7. So first up, the look and feel. Reunion 7 doesn't just copy that classic aero glass transparency we all remember. It actually updates it, blending in some of the sleeker, more modern design ideas from Microsoft's current fluent design system. It ends up feeling familiar and fresh all at the same time. But hey, the changes go way deeper than just the looks. This is where things get really practical. The original Windows 7, for example, it really struggles with any hardware built after 2020. Reunion 7 updates the drivers so it can actually run on newer computers. And you know all that built-in data collection, the telemetry that sends info back to Microsoft? Reunion 7 rips all of that out for better privacy. And all this tinkering and stripping things down leads to one of the biggest draws for enthusiasts, pure performance. By getting rid of all those extra background processes, Reunion 7 is just lighter. It uses about a third less memory when it's just sitting there. Now, if you've got an older computer, that's a huge deal. It means a faster, much snappier experience. So it looks cool, it runs faster, it sounds kind of perfect, right? Well, not so fast. Anytime you're talking about using unofficial software like this, you have to talk about the trade-offs and honestly, some very, very serious risks. This right here is the heart of the matter. The rewards are pretty clear. You get a lightweight, private, nostalgic OS that can bring old hardware back to life. But the risks, they are huge. We're talking major security holes, absolutely no official support, and let's just say it's on shaky legal ground. And let's be absolutely crystal clear about security because for most people, this is the deal breaker. Microsoft is not sending out any security patches for this, period. You are putting 100% of your trust in a group of anonymous developers online. There's a real risk that malware or backdoors could be hidden deep in the code and your modern antivirus software might not even work right with it. So, with all those massive risks, you have to wonder, why do these projects even exist? Well, it's about something bigger than just one old operating system. It's about the future of how we preserve our digital culture. So who is this actually for? Let's break it down. Reunion 7 is a really fascinating project for tech hobbyists, for people who just love to tinker. It could even be a lifesaver for a really, really old computer. But for your main computer, the one you use for work or online banking, absolutely not. The security risks are just way too high. And that leaves us with one last big idea to chew on. While Reunion 7 itself is pretty niche, it points to a much larger trend. 
Think about it. From classic video games to old, abandoned software, it's passionate fan communities who are stepping up to preserve and resurrect these digital artifacts. So the real question isn't just about an old OS. It's about our digital heritage. As the big companies inevitably move on, are these fans becoming the unofficial archivists of our future?